Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome to episode 45 of SugarTube TV. Thanks for all the comments last week. I will get back to replying to them soon, I promise. It's been a really busy week. I dynoed an engine for a chap called Simon who races in CTCRC, so hopefully he'll be back out soon. Um, we had the visit from Tim from Ireland, my pal Tim. He's off to Holland on the Going Dutch weekend, which is an imp, a big do they have. So he called in to say hello. We had a look in his car and a bit of an interview. That was great. I've had my own engine out of the imp, which you might recall I talked about skimming the block and getting the compression made sure, but I didn't do any of that. I backtracked it. I took the head off. It looked great and I thought, oh, it's sealing really well. I'll just put it back together and concentrate on other things that need to be done. So I made a decision there. I dynoed it. Didn't really get any more out of it. Had a bit of a go with this rear rad conversion, see if we could keep it cool with this new aluminium radiator. And the, and, and the fan system off a standard imp. So I've had all that, but to be honest, it, it, it couldn't cope. I'm missing something, I need to go back to the drawing board. It's fine offload, it's probably fine in a road imp, but when you wind it up at peak torque, uh, say six and a half thousand RPM for 10 seconds, you just see the temperature going straight in, it can't lose it. So heat's a byproduct of horsepower at the end of the day, and you know it's, it's a lot of heat to dissipate. We'll have to go back to the drawing board. Enough of that. Also, end of this video, I did a little bit on the fire bearing engine because they did a drawing for the new liners. So I some ducts our liners made, so that was on the end. Hope you enjoy what you see. I'm off to Mallory now, it's Friday. I'll load this up now so that when I'm in a field somewhere, I can just press go and you'll be able to watch it at seven o'clock on Sunday night. Hopefully, we'll get a midweek video of everything that's gone on at Mallory this weekend. We'll get some interviews of the drivers and uh, just general what's going on and hopefully some in-car as well from the car. The car feels really good. I'm really confident about the car. I think there's a, there's a good race in it. So, yep, I'll look forward to seeing you all midweek. Have a great week. Bye for now. Okay, YouTubers, it's Monday morning. Come, come to work and uh, Jack's just arrived back from Mildenhall. So I said, I'll go and check them wheels out, make sure they're all right for my pal. He's got £400 there ready for him. Um, oh, that one's got a nibble out of it. That's a shame. That's one that won't go again. Oh, that one looks like it's had a little rub as well. That's a shame. That's no use. It's had a bit of a crash at the back of here. Oh, that one's been curved all the way around. Never mind. And that one's not the right wheel, so to, oh yeah, he's had a crash with it. Not much of a crash, I've seen more. I want to drive it in the garage, so I'm just uh, trying to get this out. So oh, turn. I see, it's catching the wheel. Yeah, I don't know. If so you strap it to the back of the wheel. We're strapped on here. Oh my good lord. Someone's undone it. Someone's undone the strap. Let me pull out a little bit. Oh, look at that! It's like, it's like new, mate! I didn't know you did jig repair! It's got a body shop and everything down there, us. <laughs> mate, that was awesome. Pulled out amazing. You can drive it in now. Change that tyre and drive in, it's like new. Brilliant job. Okay, morning YouTubers. It's uh, Monday morning, first thing. I, uh, I've come in today itching to start work on this engine here which is my racer um ready for mallory but unfortunately you have to make the job pay or uh, we won't be here so i've decided i thought this engine here we'll do a little video about it it's a bit of a funny job this um best way of describing it is it, well i'll tell you the full story <laughs> as you sat down anyway um this engine belongs to my friend simon and Simon is the unfortunate chap who had the accident at Brands Hatch last year. You might remember the imp that got T-boned. There were some pictures of it on the internet uh, and a video of it as well. He just he came off at Paddock Hill Bend, unfortunately. It, he was about to get lapped by the leading gang and they came through and unfortunately, it was just a, one of those horrible, unavoidable accidents. Fortunately, nobody was hurt seriously, although I think um, Simon was a little bit bruised and shaken. Anyway, after that, he's decided, right, not selling the car, we're going to get it reshelled. Rooney's reshelled it for him, Mr. Cole Rooney, done a stunning job. It's a lovely car now. He dropped the engine off with me, which I'd built some time ago. God, we've got a spider on the engine here. Oh, my Lord. And he's fell into the engine. Can you see him? 
<laughs> I'll get him in a minute. We won't harm him. Anyway, long story short, Simon gave me the engine and said, right, let's make it. It's a 1012cc because he, he, he bought this initially in like 2013. I remember because I was working at Bob's and he bought a car with a with a with a um, a beige leather trim in it, like a light coloured turquoise car. And I said, why have you bought that, Simon? He said, it's got a 998 in it <laughs> and we're going to go racing. So uh, he took the engine out of the car anyway, and this was the engine. And um, and then we turned it into a racer for him. He raced it as a 998 at first, and then he wore it out, and we turned it into um, you know an, a, a plus 20 high over bore, so it became a 73 mil bore. And um, anyway, it's raced for a long time, on and off with bits of uh, track days with his kids that he does and stuff like that. So he's had this accident. He said, right, I want it making full race spec. Let's have it on the steel crank rods, etc." cetera, blah, de, blah, um, 10, 40 dry liner blocks. So I said, okay, no worries. He said, I've, I'm not planning to race much this year. I've got a, a, a calendar full of kids weddings and stuff. So just do it in your spare time, you know? So <laughs> anyway, the sun's come out. He ran me last week. He said, uh, how's my new engine doing? I said, well, I've not really started it yet. I'm machine the block, I think that's about it. He said, well, the sun's come out and I'd really like to, to do something with the car. You know, I've got it sat here back from Colin, all looking pretty. Um, what would it take to put my old engine back together so I can make a decision, you know, later in the year on what I'm going to do? Uh, you know, if, a lad, if, I'm, if I'm, obviously he's probably a bit shaken after his accident. So he wants to find out if he still enjoys it, I think. So he said, could you put it back together for me? I said, yeah, I'll do whatever you want me to do, you know, so the engine was basically fit there was nothing really wrong with it i mean it, it's, it's obviously it's worn and stuff but it's you know it didn't have any smoking issues any breathing issues any oil pressure issues i've just took the crank out and steam cleaned the block and put it all back together again and the mains were mint so we've uh we've had a bit of a divert here haven't we the point of what i'm actually trying to talk about is the bullet engine was a, a really early engine and what I wanted to talk about was how I do things differently now. So I've just been looking at it, I was thinking, crikey, I used to machine all the main bearing caps to take a spacer block. Now, I don't actually do this method anymore. What I do now is I, I use a, a, a fully threaded stud and I use a nut just to hold it in its original clamping position. And then we have another nut that we reverse up the thread and then I put a little bit of pinch on it between there and, and the plate just so as it's got, a, when you tighten it all down around the outside, you've got a bit of preload pushing the mains cap that way, if you get me. Just just because obviously when the engine's been running, the crankshaft's gonna, trying to come this way, everything's trying to push it out the bottom of the block. So that's my preferred method. Now, this was an early engine I did where I was basically copying what I'd seen from other engines that had come apart. So you, you machine the cap but machining the cap, you can just about make out there, there's um, a flat area. What that actually does is completely cocks up your mains tunnel because initially when these are line board in the factory, they have two points of contact. As soon as you give them three points of contact, the, um, if you torque them down and put a bore mic in it, they go all shapes. So sometimes the cranks don't go around very nice when they've, um, when they've been machined like this. This one obviously has had a bit of a fettling, so it all goes around nice. Um, but initially, if you look, that's what the mains cap looked like a standard. They're a full radius. They don't have the flat on them. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd talk about that for a second. And it's ended up being five minutes. Anyway, I'm going to crack on and get this running. And uh, I've got, literally, I'm going to put a set of wheels rings in it. A set of big end shells because I couldn't bear to put them back. Although, there's nothing actually wrong with them. But it's just one of those things that you, you struggle with. I've had a measure the crank in it and the crank's bob on. Um, oh my good lord, what is that? I think the uh, banger car is coming in. Should we go on video and see what it's like? Wait, it drove in. That's the result, isn't it? It's been very sensible down the yard. That's not like him at all. Oh, he's giddy. Brilliant. Right. Okay, YouTubers, the uh, engine of Simon's that we just talked about 
which uh, we've uh, got a bit involved with the waffle and the crankshaft spacers, is back together. So I'm going to get this on the dyno and get a tune out of it. And I hadn't realised that, you know, it is actually, apart from the fact it's on an old school wet liner block and it's only a 1012 instead of a 1040, it's got a really nice big valve head on it, which I've fettled several times in the past. It's got a nice pair of original Italian Webers on it. It's got a lovely Will Parry exhaust system on it. Obviously, it's got my oil cooler, my early side oil cooler, when we could still get these. These are non-available now, unfortunately. And, um, yeah, it's a really good spec of engine. So we're going to put this on the dyno now and run it and um, get a tune out of it so that Simon can get that screwed in and get a track day books and find out if he enjoys imp racing again. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he'll bounce straight back. Anyway, the point of this little video is... One of the chaps who watches, a younger generation member, emailed me twice now to say, how do you get the engine from the bench to the dyno by yourself? So it's really simple. I just thought I'd do a little video. This is the engine. It's got the flywheel on for the dyno already. I've put that on. And then this is my little trolley, which I've beefed up. I had to put some big big casters on it because... Um, the little casters weren't, weren't really man enough to support an engine, but we were putting V8s on it and all sorts at one stage. So I'm literally going to slide this off. Everything in there regarding putting engine on dyno, I can do all by myself. So I'm going to slide this off onto here, and then we'll wheel it into the dyno, and I'll go through the next bit with you. <coughs> Okay, so I've wheeled the engine in on the trolley and I've just loosely put a strap around the um, underneath of the engine, it comes out on the sump side there. So this strap, when I press this button, is attached to a little lift, a little jib lift, which is on a slider. Can you see that slider there? And that goes all the way across because the original theory was I'd be able to put engines on this dyno or on that dyno from the parking place in the middle. That dyno, by the way, that you can't actually see because I've buried it in junk. But um, anyway, that's another story. So what this is the dyno I use all the time. This is the one which is the old Heen and Froud. There's the water brake. There's the noisy drive shaft that transmits the energy from the engine through to the uh, dyno hub. In there is a big water wheel which has a, a water flow, which is controlled by this handle, which is controlled by this uh, 24 volt motor on top. So that's what I control from the other side. So it's all really straightforward. It's all analog. There's no brains in it at all, which is wonderful because I can understand it also having no brain. So, right, what we'll do is press this button and hopefully it'll take the weight of the engine. There you go. So that's the engine in the air. And then we just simply grab hold of him and go for a walk. That slides along. See like that? So that's the engine over here now. And then I won't do the next bit single-handedly, but I just basically lower it on this button here. And um, he finds himself in the perfect position for me to put the, that's actually an imp bellows in there that's been chopped up, which I'll leave on there permanently. So I just literally line the bell housing bolts up and that's it, we're ready to run in, in no time at all. So yeah, it was important for me um, as a p person who I don't really like to mire the people, you know, and oh, can you give me a lift here, can you give me a lift there? I have to be fully self-sufficient. So with this system, I don't have to mire for anybody. I can get the engines from a build point on the bench to the dyno and then back off again. Of course, when I finish running the engines, I lift them off and I just lower them onto the floor here and then we put them on a trolley and wheel them out of the workshop. Okay, hope that clears you up for my mate there who wants to know how the engine has got to the dyno. Okay, YouTubers, we're on the dyno with um, Simon's engine, the one that was just getting put back together, basically. It's literally just had a set of wheels, rings and a set of big end shells. That's it, um, because obviously he just wants to get back out there, so the fastest way was to put his old engine back together. So um, it's really, I, f I thought it would be quite good. Obviously it's fully bedded in, so I don't mind being quite hard on it, but it's got good torque, you wind it up at um, low end, about four or five it comes on. It, obviously it's got a BJ cam in it, this is BJ65.
good hundred horsepower that he'll uh, he'll be on the pace with that in his new car can't wait to see him back out right we'll uh, get this off the dyno now and crack on with getting my car ready for Mallory okay youtubers we're on with uh, a new plan for a change now the uh, viewers that pay real good attention will note that last week I said that I was going to take the engine out of my racing before Mallory I was going to skim the block and and, and get, make a little intruder on the piston to give it some more compression uh, ready for Mallory. Now, I've took the head off and it's sealing that well. It's absolutely perfect and the home looks good and I was just, I was just generally happy with it. And plus it's like Wednesday. I don't think it's a wise thing to do to take it all apart and skin the block. I think for the gains I'm gonna get in the torque, what I'd rather do is leave the engine because it was an all right engine. I could just about keep with James on the straights. I'll uh, put it back together quickly, get it on the dyno. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get the new radiator that sits alongside, you know, the imp radiator with a fan on an assembly. I've got some bits here that I've clipped it together. So we're gonna put all that together and, um, and run it on the dyno and see if we can make it work with the rear radiator fan. Uh, running through a standard radiator that's obviously been remade in aluminium because that I think that'd be a better use of the time than taking this all apart in case you're wondering what that is if you remember from the Brands Hatch video from last year when we thought the heat from the exhaust was was cooking the um, donut that's what that was all about right I'll get on with this and we'll get a tune out of it hopefully today at some point okay youtubers have just uh, got the engine on the dyno running um, but we've had a visitor so I thought we'd have a little interview with him this is my mate Tim from Ireland and his lovely red everyday imp. How you doing Tim? Hiya, hiya, good to see you. Good. Yeah, what I was going to say was, um, can you tell us a bit about your car and the engine? And um, we've just been for a little bit of a drive in it, which we'll put a video on later. It drives really nicely. Can you pop the hood please? Yeah. It's a, a 998. Tim built this himself. Twin 40 carbs, got a race camshaft, one of ours in it. And uh, Skip, that Skip Brown guy did the head, didn't he? Neil Porter. Not Neil Porter, Neil Roper. Um, rear rad still, aluminium rad in it. Yep. Right, well, I'll, I better stop talking and let you do the talk, don't I? Yeah, I'll put the microphone here for you. Okay. Well, this is, uh, this is my M Cal Cal uh, Caledonian. It's sort of, I suppose, a, a, a recreation of a car that that I wished I had uh, in the late 80s when I first had the uh, my first Caledonian and I didn't have the skills or money or to be honest the the, the knowledge to do anything with it so this is me this, is a, this is a popular type of story this yeah so I, I'm sure I'm sure it echoes with a number of people that this is what I would have built in my in my mid 20s if I, if I was able to right well it goes like the absolute clappers mate I, I love it and the bodywork and everything it's a uh, it's proper in, in use car isn't it you know it's not it's not a show queen no. but it but it's lovely and straight oh you've put a twin headlamp front end on it which is exactly what i would have done exactly what i would have done oh, back did. in the day so this is a nostalgia not just for the car but for the, for all that i did back then so it's it, a midlife crisis absolutely. car absolutely it's a crisis yeah. car so a crisis car so I it, love it. it, it does all fun. the events that we used to do it does night navigation events it does anything that i can enter it for just tell me, that's... come and sit in the car and tell me about this dashboard because right. lo it looks like something out of uh, Back to the Future car. Wow, so this is the um, the time control, is it, when you go on your navigation rallies? Yeah. So this gives me uh, accurate distance, uh, total distance and, and intermediate. Normally there's a button here, right. but my wife doesn't need it for, for the trip that we're going on, so it's been taken off. So that resets the intermediate, which you use for calling junctions and stuff like that and the total distance for each section right you use for average speed and then this bit over here does the calculations for us if we if i'd gone to the bother of setting this to real time and setting in a speed mm. it then reads out what distance i should have done to average that speed and then if i match that distance with this i know that i'm exactly where i need to be on the road so over at home in ireland you're using this as a regular thing to do all your rallies on are you yeah yeah the, the night navigation rallying unfortunately has has suffered there are only a few events uh, each year but right. we, we try to we try to do any that run um it used to be a you know a 12 15 round championship but mm. unfortunately the interest isn't there anymore i don't think what a shame because it looks like lots of fun it was it it was a lot of fun we, we did it for 
for maybe 10 or 15 years uh, and, and to be fair I got quite good at it so excellent so you're over in Ma- Manchester today because you've got kids at university and stuff haven't you yeah yep. and then where are you off to is it Monday uh, Sunday you're off, uh, Friday you're off uh, s- Saturday into Sunday we're off to, to Holland to do going Dutch going Dutch uh, that for those that don't know sorry that's um like a big imp gathering where there's lots of Dutch people with Hillman's they put a big weekend on for everybody and, and then after that we're doing the 9CR which is this run through Europe <laughs> and back uh, immediately after going Dutch why not why not why not I love it and this is my this is the big book this tells us exactly where and when and, and how, how we're supposed and, to and the wife's involved in this as well yep. could you ask us a word with my wife <laughs> she, she's she's very much uh, on board with the the whole travel bit of it yeah. maybe she'd you want to do it in a slightly bu- more comfortable car no but, mate this right. this drives beautifully have you booked a few nice hotels for her yes they're all we're, we're not we're not slumming it we're not going crazy but at the same time yeah we're not slumming it. you're not you're not on shared showers or anything no, no. <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be fine so oh brilliant well i hope you have a really really good time yeah. If you uh, break down, ring Vince, don't ring me. Oh. <laughs> no, he's <laughs> <are you> joking. <laughs> I take it the bonnet is absolutely brim with spares, is it? It is. Go on, show me. I could, I could literally. <laughs> uh, unless it throws a rod. <laughs> <laughs> so it went, it went quite quickly with all this weight in it. Oh, wow, yeah. There's my main inch, just in case I have to work on it. That's water pump. Uh... That's mainly uh, bearings and stuff like that. That's all my brake components. That's brake components? Yeah, just Is it on disc brakes? It's on disc at the front, yeah. Wow, it does stop well. Yeah. I love it. Well, thank you very much for showing us around the car, Tim. I hope you have a lovely time in Holland and then on, on your forward journey. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing how you get on. Okay, great. Thank you very That's much it. indeed. Thanks. For right, that. we'll do. We're just out in Tim's car. He's very kindly said I could go for a little blast there and see what I thought. It drives. I've got the head back on my engine, having made the, dis- the decision not to uh, change it anyway. And I put it on the dyno, thought we'll get a set of figures out of it first, see if it's how it was when I last ran it for brands last year, which it does seem to be pretty much mir- mirroring the uh, same power. So I've just messed about a bit with the advance in the fuel and I've not really gained anything. So I think it is doing what it's doing. It's doing a good steady sort of 80 foot pounds, so quite happy with it. Um, what I was going to say was I've been busy building the fan assembly up so I've got all the fan assembly and the radiator ready to go on so I just thought I'll get a peak torque figure now and then we'll go back to peak torque in a couple of hours and we'll see if um, the fan is a massive drain and also we'll get to see if the fan is able to keep the cooling under control so we'll load him up Well, 
Yeah, it was a good engine, this. Um, we just need to see how much the fan is going to affect it. Right, we'll leave it at that for now. Okay, we've got the new radiator with the bigger header tank and the larger pipes on it for increased flow. And um, this is an, an imp uh, tin shroud. You might recognize it from your imp. And basically this goes on here. Now the point of this video is I'm sort of showing off a little bit because I just wanted to share with you how I have actually advanced in recent times because I've got to drill holes basically in the side of here for these little short screws to go in. Here's the short screws. Now years ago, I would have um, used a long drill and uh, tried to control the depth of it and then probably drill straight through the core and completely ruin the radiator and spent the rest of the day hating the world. But just to show you how I have developed, there you go. I've actually chopped the drill down. So when I put the drill in here now, which I can't do with my left hand, only that much protrudes. So in theory, I can't cock the job up. So uh, we'll get this screwed on the side and then hopefully we'll get it on the engine and hopefully it will control the temperature, wide open throttle at peak torque, which would be a real result for um, uh, basically for, for me because uh, yeah I think if the minis can make it work then I can make it work. Right okay chaps just to try and be excited about this which I was five minutes ago or a quarter of an hour ago but I'll just run it and it doesn't work <laughs> so if anyone's got any ideas you can let me know. Um, obviously I've run the fan at one to one the heat coming off it is enormous, you know, you can feel the heat off the rad. It's dissipating the heat, but as soon as I put it on load, I can see the temperature rising to 90 degrees water. That's without a stat in it. So I tried restricting the water flow in case the water was going too fast, etc. Um, but nothing made any difference. Obviously, I've just got that open to draw the, the ambient in here is uh, 24 degrees. So it's not unlike what a hot race day would be. Um, so shame because I put a lot of time into making all this uh, work correctly. It's all lined up properly and all seems to be doing its job. But it isn't working. Um, I don't know why. It must just not have enough heating uh, ability to dissipate the heat that's been created by the engine. It's fine offload. You can rev it and all the rest of it. As soon as you put it on load, as we know from... Uh, history you know heat is a byproduct of work done so as soon as the engine starts to graft it really starts producing some heat um, hence why the hillmans always get warm going up a long hill but um yeah not sure what's going on here yet i need to have a think about this anyway i don't think it's going to be a happener for mallory because i can't risk going there i was thinking it was going to be struggling to even get on the gauge you know because it was like so efficient at cooling its, at its water it was going to be amazing but <laughs> that isn't the case so, um, right, I'll give you a run anyway on the dyno and show you what it's doing, see if you can understand what's happening. Okay, we're running on the dyno. I've just been stood next to the engine with the fan blowing the hot air out of the radiator over me. And that the air is so hot coming out of it, you can, you know, you can barely hold your hand there with gloves on. And it's pulled it from 90 to 80 degrees in about five minutes um, with no, uh, no load on it, you know. So, it just hasn't got the capacity. I'd have expected that to have frozen itself, just sat there producing, I don't know, 10 horsepower to turn itself over. I'd have thought it would have just absolutely pulled all the temperature out of it. I've directed the cold air fan directly behind the rad now, so we know we've got cold air going to one side of it. We'll wind it up. temperature straight back into it. We're on full water flow. I am tempted to put a stat in it. A stat in it. Oh, that's not very good, is it? The engine's died. Sorry about that, chaps. We had a critical wiring fault. The wire fell off the coil. So, I'll start putting some load on. I don't want to go too crazy because I don't like when the blood temperature's up at like 85. Wide open at five there. Five and a half. Doesn't appear to have affected the power at all. Keep it at 
it's uh I don't like being too wide open for too long. Right. Interesting, the temperature hasn't gone up that much. It's certainly not boiled anyway, I think it's up about 85, 90. Now that I've, the fan's slowed down, yeah, I can see the temperature gauge creeping up. But it's just no good, I needed it to be like 30 degrees or 40 degrees offload and then see a maximum of 60, you know, in here. That's just too hot, that. it just hasn't got the cooling capacity. So I'm going to have to think a bit more about this job, but um, nothing ventured, nothing gained. So hopefully we'll, next time we revisit it, it will be a, a better job. Okay YouTubers, it's been a bit of a reverse week, I've had to go backwards again, we're going back to the front rad. That rear rad system just simply isn't up for the job just yet. I'm sure it'll work well in hydraulic when we put it in there, but uh, for the temperature target I want to reach, it's just not there. So um, I've gone back to, obviously you can see I've got the other pulley on now, i just changed the dizzy because um, the other one, a bit of play, you could see it been munching the posts inside the cap, so I thought We'll change the dizzy for one with no play in the shaft um, and I've managed to make it do exactly what I wanted to do so it's advancing a little bit later than before it does appear to have helped it so the engine's fit and strong so um, we will come back to that um, rear rad conversion I just have to think about it a bit more and work out where I'm going wrong because it obviously can be done because all the minis have got um, like probably a lot more horsepower than us and they keep cool uh, for half an hour or an hour race so yeah, there is a way of doing it, I've just not sussed it yet. So we'll give this a wind up anyway. Yeah, it's got a ridge bit down there, but it is a, a very wild camera this one. absolutely stonking like I'd like it to be but it's still if you remember the talk from last week where I said I'd like to have seen um, get it in the 12 to 1 compression ratio bracket it's still down because obviously as you saw earlier in the video I took the head off and then put it straight back on again so yep yeah, it's gonna be all right as long as we get a race out of it on Saturday and a race out of it on Sunday I'll be a happy bunny okay you may remember last week I uh, received some needle roller bearings to put on my steering column in the imp because it was on nylon bushes and it wasn't very nice so these are the nylon bushes that these are these are the needle roller bearings that sit on the three-quarter shaft now the tube that the um, housing that this all goes in is 27 mil so I found myself some 28 mil tube which was quite handy I just hacksawed it off to length and then what I was going to talk about was for a second was how a really easy way of machining the outside diameter or something so basically so far all I've done is I've bored them to a shoulder you can probably just about make out inside there's a shoulder there so the bearing will go to that shoulder and stop and then what we want to do is we want to top turn the outside now because it's so flimsy and thin I only want to take it down from 28 to um, 27 mil all the way to a shoulder so it sits on like a hat so I'm going to turn this now but what I've done is I've pressed the bearing in first so that I've got something to bite on with the jaws because if you try and grab the alley it just goes like a triangle so that's what I've done there if you can see I've now grabbed it by the bearing and I'm going to turn it to a shoulder about three four mil off the edge and that'll be the hat that it sits on so we'll turn this 27 mil now and then we can get them knots into the shaft into the steering column and uh, get a result okay chaps we're in the yard, in the imp, 
I finished making the bush with the sleeve on the outside of it and uh, what I'm looking for is um, that Sir Alan Milliard moment where we say it's just perfect so I'm going to try and tap it in now I'm just going to go in dry no lot tight or anything because there's a chance that one day it may have to come out you never know I think we're going to say that's just perfect. I can't wait to get the column in and see how it all turns. Okay, YouTubers, it's not been a waste of a day after all. I've just fitted my steering wheel uh, column with the new roller bearings in, the needle rollers, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's nice and free and uh, feels really, feels it just feels proper. So I can't wait to drive the car now on Saturday. So after the disaster of the uh, cooling system that just didn't work for whatever reason to be decided, um, this has been a nice finish today. Okay, YouTubers, I was outside loving life, putting the engine back in my Hillman, ready for Mallory, and the rain came. So I thought, hmm, we'll have a little bit of a break and come inside out of the rain. And I've got this little job to do. And I thought I'd share it with you because it may be of some interest to people who are uh, into the Hillmans and whatnot. So this is a Hillman Imp, um, we call it a banana inlet manifold, an aftermarket one. And this is, I believe, a Jan Speed small bore. And the problem that I commonly come across is these obviously, this interacts with the um, inlet manifold and we have what we call like a Siamese nut and washer. So the nut and washer sits on half of the manifold and half of the exhaust manifold and it's shared but the problem is for some reason all the new manifolds are made on a 10 mil flange and all the old manifolds are made on a half inch flange so we end up with like 2.7 millimeters difference in height between this bit this is thicker than this bit so when you clamp the exhaust the, the nut up with the washer it tips and doesn't pinch the thinner flange properly it only pinches the inlet flange so I spoke to my mate who's had a problem, Bob, with his uh, imp and exhaust manifold blowing, and he said, oh, you know, I've got this problem. So I said, look, I have to do this quite a lot, so don't sweat about it. Just drop it off, and when I get two minutes, I will uh, drop on it and sort it out for you. So all I've done is set the depth from the tip of the tool there to the bed of 10 millimeters. I'm gonna start the machine up now. Now, if you look in there, you can just about make out the semicircle of where the washer was sat. There's another one there one there and one there. I've already done this one and then I've moved it to a new clamping site so I can do the last three, four without having to stop. So we'll, uh, I should be able to fire the machine up and uh, just do this while we're actually videoing. It's not a, t a particularly hard task, it just takes a bit of setting up. <laughs> Okay, so you can see what I'm trying to achieve. I'm just literally giving him a ledge the same fitness as this one. So when he puts his washer on it, it clamps evenly. Job, job. Good morning, YouTubers. It's Friday, uh, the day before the race at Mallory. And uh, I find myself in new territory because the car's actually ready. And all I've got to do is load it into the box. So I thought, well, I've been trying to find five minutes to uh, do a little drawing for the liner for this engine. Now, I won't go on too much, but if you remember back in episode seven of Sugar Tube TV, when we first started out, I did a bit of a talk about this engine. It came to me as a block and a crank. It's a very special engine, this. It's a five bearing imp engine. So 
it's been recast as a copy of the um, original five bearing roots uh, rally engine that was done for Rosemary Smith in the, in 1965 now the chap that's come to me with this engine is basically you know it's like it's like a dream job for me this he sort of said look let's make everything as correct as possible and give it the best chance it's got a very special cylinder head to go on it as well which has got um, the deep inlet ports which I've also talked about in the past but today I thought what I'll do is I'll just do a little drawing so that we can get the um, the the liners made because we're going to get the liners made um, they're called ductile liners the ones I propose to get made rather than the standard grey cast iron ones they've got like I don't know exactly but they've got more is it molybdenum and chromium in them percentage wise it gives them better wear and they're like three times the strength so after seeing Benoit's liner that cracked the other day I want to give this thing the very very best chance of uh, being a long successful race engine so last time we watched this we did a video uh, back in episode 7 we talked about we did a drawing and we did the block eye etc and to get the dynamics where I wanted them with the rod ratio where I wanted it I needed to get a new connecting rod made so that's where this comes in this is the new connecting rod um, and what I want to show you was it's quite long obviously it's a it's a hollow dowel so you can see on the cap there it's a hollow dowel that locates the cap so I'm really happy with these rods they're up, they'll be good these good for 10,000 rpm I hope um, now the next bit is I put the crankshaft at TDC if you look down here and I just did a bit of a dry build I just thought I was pretty confident that my mathematics was going to be correct when it came to doing the um basically i've organized the rods to be made and i've organized the spacer for the top of the engine now this spacer is to um support the top of the liners so that's all come out absolutely perfect we've got about a million 1.1 mil there uh, just for machining so because i'm going to machine all the faces obviously as i've done it all and then we'll have a nice tdc height so that's all really pleasing so now that I've got the spacer plate made, lovely job by Rodwell Motorsport uh, down in Weymouth. What I'm going to do is I'm done myself. Uh, just fired the CAD the CAD system up and um, just done myself a little drawing of the uh, the liner that I want to get made. So we'll get that organised uh, early next week and in, in the process of being made, so that we can then we can bore through all this, put the new liner in. Well. The, these engines did actually come with liners but unfortunately the first problem was the rod length was too short for where I wanted it to be so as you can see the piston came well out the top of the block to the tune of about 14 millimeters and also for some reason it hasn't cleaned up on this side you can see the land maybe a bit of casting shrinkage or something so we couldn't use those liners so I thought well we're going to redo it let's do it absolutely as best as possible because uh, we want this thing to be an absolute flyer so i'll get that done now and i'm going to go and wash the car and put it in the race box okay youtubers hope you've enjoyed tonight's show i'm off to mallory now so uh, we'll get a video midweek of all the in car hopefully a bit of luck just give you a quick walk round. that's the uh last year's engine just had a bit of a dyno session with uh, no extra power gained i'm ashamed to say but it did do okay um, and then in here we've got a luxury gearbox it's got reverse gear it's got needle roller bearings in there i'll just fire him up it sounds awesome 